The History of the Creation of the World Discover the amazing story of the creation of the world, from the first flash of light to the creation of humanity, according to Genesis. This journey takes us from the initial chaos to a world teeming with life, highlighting our responsibility towards the care of creation. Dive into this origin story that reflects the grandeur of the universe and our unique place in it, a story of love and divine wisdom. Chapter 1. The Beginning In the infinite void, before time and matter took shape, darkness enveloped everything that existed and did not exist. A bottomless abyss, an echoless silence, an unbreakable solitude dominated the universe. In this scenario of nothingness, the Spirit of God moved with purpose and determination over the surface of the deep and eternal waters. There were no stars twinkling in the sky, no lands emerging from the sea, only the infinite waters and the Creator Spirit, foreshadowing the beginning of something extraordinary. This movement was not random or arbitrary but the prelude to a divine intervention, a force that would transform chaos into order, nothingness into something. The Spirit of God, present and eternal, was about to utter the most significant act of creation, marking the beginning of existence as we know it. This moment of stillness before creation, this instant suspended in eternity, was charged with potential and possibility. The stage was set for the unleashing of the most powerful creative force, for God's word to resonate in the void and initiate the dance of creation. In this space of infinite possibilities, the Spirit of God prepared to order chaos, to shape the universe and fill it with life, light, and beauty. The story of everything we know was about to begin, driven by the will and word of God, transforming the abyss into an ordered and inhabited cosmos. Chapter 2. The Primordial Light With a divine command, let there be light, darkness was pierced by the first dawn of creation. This light, overflowing with purity and energy, not only dispelled darkness but also brought the dawn of consciousness, of knowledge, of good and evil. It was a light that did not emanate from any known star or sun but directly from God's will, marking the beginning of all that would be. This primordial light not only illuminated, it was also the first act of separation and order in the primeval chaos, dividing time between day and night and establishing the fundamental rhythm of existence. With this act, God not only revealed his power but also his intention to create a universe governed by laws and harmony, where each element would have its place and purpose. The creation of light was more than a physical phenomenon. It was the birth of the concept of hope, of the possibility to see beyond immediate darkness, to seek and find goodness at the heart of the void. This light, by separating from darkness, symbolized the eternal struggle between the known and the unknown, between security and mystery, between good and evil. In this act of creation, the universe began to take shape, defined by contrasts and dualities that would be fundamental for the understanding of life itself. The light, in its purest essence, not only allowed vision but also became the first indicator of time, of change, and of the eternal cycle of life. With light, God had not only illuminated the world but also set the first milestone towards an ordered and comprehensible cosmos. Chapter 3. The Celestial Expansion After illuminating the darkness, God set out to order the chaos of the waters, pronouncing the existence of the firmament. This act of separation created the sky, a vast and unimaginable expanse that would house everything to come. The firmament stood as a celestial dome, dividing the waters above from the waters below, thus establishing the space for the atmosphere and sky, fundamental elements for life and the order of the cosmos. This newly formed sky was not just an empty space but the canvas upon which the rest of creation would be painted. It was the stage for future wonders, the home of clouds, the wind, and eventually, the celestial bodies that would mark time and seasons. With the creation of the firmament, God demonstrated his intention to create a dynamic and constantly evolving world, a cosmos where each element would have its specific place and function. 
The celestial expansion symbolized the transition from chaos to order, from emptiness to fullness. In this space, the potential for life and beauty was infinite, waiting to be filled with God's continuous creation. The firmament became the frontier between the earthly and the divine, a constant reminder of the majesty and omnipotence of the Creator. This act of separation and creation also established the fundamental laws that would govern the universe, gravity, the atmosphere, and the relationship between space and time. The sky, in its immensity and beauty, would be an eternal witness to God's ability to order the universe, creating a home for the life that was to manifest on earth and in the waters. With each act of creation, the world became more complex, more interconnected, and more prepared to host the diversity of life that was yet to appear. Chapter 4. Earth, Sea, and Vegetation With the firmament already established, God turned his attention to the waters covering the earth. With a word, he ordered, Let the waters under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear. And so, the waters gathered, revealing the dry land, and God called the dry land, earth, and the gathered waters he called, seas. With this act, the stage was set for the birth of life's diversity. But creation did not stop there. God, in his wisdom, knew that the earth could not remain barren. Let the land produce vegetation, he pronounced. And so, from the earth sprouted grasses, plants bearing seed, and fruit trees. Each according to its kind, each bearer of seeds, creating a life cycle that would endure through the ages. This green mantle not only beautified the earth but also established the foundation for ecological balance and life. The creation of vegetation was an act of divine providence, ensuring that all living beings to come would have the necessary sustenance to thrive. Photosynthesis, the water cycle, pollination, and so many other natural processes essential for life on earth were established at this moment. Vegetation became the base of the food chain, the world's lung, transforming carbon dioxide into breathable oxygen, purifying the air, and regulating the climate. Moreover, each plant, each tree, was imbued with unique beauty and complexity, a manifestation of the love and attention to detail of its creator. From vast forests to the humblest of grasses, each had a role to play, a contribution to make to the balance and harmony of the newly formed world. This tapestry of plant life would not only sustain the creatures that would soon populate the land and seas but also offer shelter, shade, and beauty, adorning the world with an infinite palette of colors, textures, and fragrances. With the dry land and seas established, and vegetation sprouting in abundance, the stage was completely set for the following acts of creation. The earth was no longer a barren place but a welcoming home, full of potential for life in its many forms. The wisdom and power of God had transformed chaos into a complex and functional order, an interconnected ecosystem ready to host the diversity of life that was yet to manifest. Chapter 5. The Celestial Bodies Once vegetation was established on the earth, the celestial stage demanded attention. Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, declared God, and so the sun, the moon, and the stars were created. These celestial bodies would not only serve to illuminate the earth but also to mark time, seasons, days, and years. The sun, with its daylight, would govern the day, while the moon and stars would shine at night, guiding navigators and marking the passage of time. This act of creation reflected the perfection of divine design, ensuring that life on Earth could thrive in a regulated and predictable environment. The growth cycles of plants, the migratory patterns of animals, and the rhythms of human life would align with these celestial markers. The sun would provide the energy necessary for photosynthesis, crucial for the sustenance of the food chain, while the moon would influence tides and the biological cycles of numerous species. The creation of the celestial bodies also served as a reminder of the magnitude and majesty of God's creation. Observing the night sky, dotted with stars, 
future generations would contemplate the work of a creator who had arranged each light in the firmament with infinite purpose and precision. These celestial bodies, in their unchanging course, would be witnesses to humanity's history, inspiring awe, curiosity, and a longing to understand the mysteries of the universe. Moreover, the creation of the celestial bodies underscored the interconnectedness of everything in the cosmos. The sunlight, reflected by the moon, stars guiding travelers, all were part of a complex and cohesive design, a celestial symphony that marked the rhythm of existence on Earth. With this act, God had not only illuminated the world but also established a universal order, a cosmic clock that would regulate life in all its forms and manifestations. Chapter 6. Aquatic and Aerial Life With the foundations of the earth firmly established and the heavens brilliantly adorned, God turned his gaze to the waters and the skies. Let the waters teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky, he proclaimed. In response to his command, the waters filled with a myriad of creatures, from the tiniest and most elegant forms of microscopic life to the great leviathans that would navigate the oceans. Simultaneously, the skies were beautified by the flapping and songs of birds, each with its distinctive plumage and melody, filling the air with life and color. This act of creation was not just a demonstration of power but a celebration of diversity and complexity. Each aquatic creature and each bird were created with unique adaptations to their environment, equipped with everything necessary to survive, reproduce, and flourish. The waters, previously calm, now teemed with the activity of fish and marine mammals, each fulfilling a specific role in the delicate balance of the aquatic ecosystem. In the air, birds became the first melodies of a world beginning to fill with sounds and colors. From majestic eagles, dominating the skies, to humble sparrows, each bird contributed its own note to the symphony of life that was beginning to orchestrate on Earth. Their ability to fly was not only a miracle of biological engineering but also a symbol of freedom and the inexhaustible creativity of the Creator. The creation of aquatic and aerial life marked a milestone in the creation process, demonstrating God's desire to fill every corner of the world with living beings, each perfectly adapted to its environment. This chapter of creation underscored the importance of each creature, no matter how large or small, in maintaining the natural balance and contributing to the rich tapestry of life on Earth. The beauty and complexity of these forms of aquatic and aerial life were a testimony to the love and attention to detail of God in His creative work. Every fish that swam in the waters and every bird that soared in the skies were living examples of God's ability to infuse life, movement, and purpose into matter. With this act of creation, the world had transformed from a blank canvas into a vibrant and dynamic masterpiece, each creature a thread in the fabric of existence, each essential to the whole. Chapter 7. Terrestrial Fauna after filling the seas with life and the skies with flight and song, the earth itself clamored to be populated. Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, declared God, and so, the ground became the stage for a new display of life. Animals of all shapes and sizes began to walk, run, and crawl on the face of the earth. From the tiniest insects to the great mammals, each animal was created with meticulous attention to its purpose and place within creation. This act of terrestrial population highlighted the diversity and adaptability of life. Each species of terrestrial animal, endowed with unique characteristics, demonstrated life's ability to occupy every ecological niche, from the driest deserts to the densest jungles. The creation of these animals not only added more dynamism and variety to the world but also laid the foundations for interaction and interdependence among all forms of life. The peaceful coexistence of these creatures in those early days was a reflection of the order and harmony that God had envisioned for his creation. Each animal, whether predator or prey, played an essential role in the balance of nature, maintaining the health and stability of terrestrial ecosystems. This rich diversity of life also set the stage for the most complex of beings God was about to create, the human being. The terrestrial fauna, 
in its immense variety and complexity, was one more manifestation of the ingenuity and generosity of the Creator. Each creature, from the largest to the smallest, from the gentlest to the fiercest, was perfect in its design, each uniquely adapted to its environment and way of life. This rich tapestry of living beings not only made the world a place of inexhaustible interest and beauty but also underscored the responsibility that would come with God's final and most complex creation, the human being. Chapter 8 – The Creation of Man The culmination of God's creative work was about to be revealed. After preparing the stage with a fertile earth, expansive skies, abundant seas, and a diversity of life filling every corner of the world, God proclaimed, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. Thus, from the dust of the earth, God formed man and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. For the first time, a being capable of reflecting, understanding, and interacting with the world and its creator in a unique way walked the earth. This being, created in the image and likeness of God, possessed divine attributes reflected in his ability to reason, love, and make moral decisions. Unlike the other creatures, man and woman were endowed with free will, a capacity for choice that elevated them above mere instinctive existence. They were complex beings, capable of cultivating relationships, exploring creation, and, above all, recognizing and worshipping their creator. The creation of man and woman marked a turning point in the creation story, for they were not just living creatures but also custodians of all that God had made. They were entrusted with the task of filling the earth and subduing it, ruling over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and all the creatures that move on the earth. This responsibility implied care and respect for creation, a call to maintain the balance and harmony established by God. The relationship between human beings and their Creator was intimate and direct. God had not only formed man and woman with his own hands but also established a dialogue, a communication that reflected the divine desire for a personal and loving relationship with his most complex creations. This spiritual connection was unique, distinguishing humans from all other forms of life on earth. The creation of man and woman in God's image also entailed an inherent responsibility toward the rest of creation. They were called to be caretakers and protectors of the earth, to use their intelligence, creativity, and capacity for good, ensuring that the abundance and beauty of the created world were preserved for future generations. In this act of creation, God had placed his trust in humanity, entrusting them with the care of his masterpiece, the earth. Chapter 9, The Mandate of Stewardship Once the creation of man and woman was complete, God granted them their first great responsibility. Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the earth. This mandate was not merely a call to domination or indiscriminate use of natural resources but an invitation to participate in the management and care of God's creation. This task of stewardship implied a deep understanding of the interconnectedness of all forms of life and the ecological balance that sustains existence on earth. Human beings, created in the image of God, were called to reflect the love, wisdom, and prudence of their Creator in every interaction with the natural world. It was a mandate that underscored the need for sustainable development, responsible exploitation of resources, and protection of habitats and species. Moreover, this call to stewardship also extended to caring for one another, to building just and compassionate societies that reflected the values of God's kingdom. Humanity was called to cultivate not only the land but also human relationships, promoting peace, justice, and brotherly love. The divine mandate to care for creation established a relationship of responsibility and harmony between humanity and the natural world. It was a constant reminder that every element of creation had value and purpose, and that the well-being of the earth and its creatures was intrinsically linked to human behavior and decisions. This call to stewardship was, in essence, a call to harmonious and sustainable coexistence, ensuring that the beauty and abundance of God's creation were maintained for future generations. 
Chapter 10, Divine Rest. After six days of intense creative activity, God arrived at the seventh day, a day destined not for more creation but for rest. And God completed on the seventh day his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. This act of rest not only marked the conclusion of creation but also established the Sabbath as a sacred time of pause, reflection, and renewal. This day of rest served as an eternal reminder to humanity of the importance of balance between work and rest, between activity and contemplation. It was an invitation to stop, to admire God's work, to reflect on the magnitude of creation, and to reaffirm the relationship between the Creator and creation. The divine rest symbolized God's satisfaction and pleasure in His work, declaring that all He had created was very good. The Sabbath, therefore, became a sign of the covenant between God and humanity, a time dedicated to worship, rest, and communion with the Creator and creation. This day of pause was also an opportunity for human beings to reflect on their role as custodians of the earth, remembering the responsibility to care for and preserve the beauty and integrity of the natural world. In this act of rest, God established a rhythm of life that balances doing with being, work with rest, teaching humanity the importance of living in harmony with creation and the Creator. The seventh day was, and continues to be, a reminder that, amid our labors and endeavors, we must find time for rest, for reflection, and for gratitude for the blessings of life and the beauty of the world around us.